This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today, we talk about residence premises and why a move of an insured from her home in Colorado to Missouri defeated coverage when the Colorado house caught fire and an insured must reside at the premises at the time of loss under the terms and conditions of a basic California, Colorado, Missouri homeowner's policy and why an unrealized future intent will not create a residence. Perla Olave owned a house in Thornton, Colorado that was insured by American Family Mutual Insurance Company. In late 2017, Ms. Olave began spending a majority of her, of her time in Missouri, and starting in March of 2018, she allowed the family of her brother, Jamie Darcy Olave Hernandez, to live in the Thornton house. In September of 2020, the house was damaged by fire. Ms. Olave had last stayed there in December of 2019, and she had not spent a day in Colorado in 2020. In a case entitled Perla Olave v. American Family, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeal on August 15, 2024, resolved the dispute over the meaning of the term reside. American Family denied Mrs. Olave's and Mr. Olave Hernandez's claims under the insurance policy on the ground that Mrs. Olave did not reside in the Thornton house at the time of the fire and had not complied with the policy's requirement to notify American Family of her change in residence. Mrs. Olave and Mr. Olave Hernandez Collectively, the appellant sued American Family, and the district court granted summary judgment to American Family. In December of 2016, Ms. Olave represented in her application that she and her child would be the only residences of the property, it would be her primary residence, and it would be owner-occupied. American Family renewed the policy in December 2019. The policy's declaration still identified Ms. La Olave as the named insured in the property as a primary residence. In January of 2018, however, she enrolled her child in school in Missouri and obtained a business license there. At that point, the property was vacant. When the policy was up for renewal in December of 2019, Ms. Olave told her insurance agent that her mailing address had changed to Missouri, but that she was still living at the property and was going back and forth to Missouri for work. It simply was untrue. When the house caught fire, the insurance company can continued and started an investigation. The property was clearly damaged in an electrical fire on September 15, 20, 2020. Ms. Olave was in Missouri. The last time she had stayed at the property was some weeks in December of 2019. The time before that was in August of 2019, but Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, she had not spent a single day in Colorado in 2020. She also stated she had a Missouri driver's license and her Colorado driver's license had expired. So American Family denied coverage in January of 2021. Because, one, Ms. Olave's Colorado vehicle res registration for a 2018 Jeep Cherokee expired in 2018. Social media photos of, by Ms. 
Olave since 2018 were all from Missouri. Ms. Olave was the owner of Prida Microblading, a studio located in the city of town and country Missouri, and Ms. Olave maintained her tattoo license with the state of Missouri. Four, a blog fo focused on Ms. Olave's business stated that Ms. Olave moved to the St. Louis area to ensure that her daughter grew up around extended family. And five, most notable, Ms. Olave registered to vote in Missouri beginning on February 1, 2018 and continuing through the date of the loss, thereby establishing a residence and domicile in Missouri. Ms. Olave's residence at the property, the district court identified four relevant factors. One, the subjective or declared intent of the individual. Two, the formality or informality of the relationship between the individual and members of the household. Three, the existence of another place of lodging, and four, the relevant permanence or transient na nature of the individual's residence in the household. The district court held that Ms. Olave breached her obligation under the policy to notify American family of her change of residence within 30 days. The district court granted summary judgment to American family on the bad faith and statutory delay denial claims. Under Colorado law, residence denotes a place where a person dwells. It simply requires bodily presence as an inhabitant in a given place. Ms. Olave's focus on her intent, whether without regard to her physical presence, is not a reasonable interpretation of the term reside under Colorado law. She may have intended to be there, but she was in Missouri. The court, therefore, did not err in holding the misrepresentations were material because a misrepresentation will be considered material if a reasonable insurance company, in determining its course of action, would attach importance to the fact misrepresented. The district court and the Tenth Circuit noted that no reasonable juror could conclude that an insurance company would not attach importance to the alleged reason for Ms. Olave's travel when the policy specified a work-related travel exception to the requirement to report the property as uninhabited, and no reasonable juror would conclude that an insurance company would not attach importance in a statement of ownership of items at the property in determining whether Ms. Olave truly resided at the property as she claimed. A homeowner's policy, in my opinion, is a contract of personal indemnity that requires the person who is the subject of the insurance to actually live, to actually occupy, to actually reside in the property that is the subject of the insurance. Ms. Olave did not live at the Colorado house. She didn't reside there. She barely visited, and she lied to the insurer when she renewed the policy that she lived there as her primary residence. It burned when someone else lived there, and she resided in Missouri, not Colorado. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog, and you'll receive notice of every blog posting, usually five or six a week, and you'll gain access to the more than 4,850 blog postings. You can also subscribe to these videos at YouTube and rumble.com. They're free. And you can subscribe to my free Substack publications if uh, you're interested. 
Please tell your friends and colleagues about this blog and the video and let them also subscribe. And if you're interested in further detail about insurance, insurance claims, insurance law, and insurance fraud, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.